Hey everybody, welcome to the carport. I just picked up a 2004 EX that had some trouble shifting between second and third gear. So I took it out the other day for a test drive, and guess what? Some of you may have noticed that I just started stocking these waterproof VTEC solenoid and oil switch pigtails on the website. They come from Classic Automotive in North Carolina. So I thought, hey, let's make some lemonade out of this issue and I'll go ahead and do an install video on how to put these new pigtails in. So that code directs us to the VTEC solenoid, specifically the oil pressure switch. And the VTEC is located right back here. We're gonna pull this hose out of the way just to give us a little bit more room to work with. And there, what you'll notice is the plugs on top of these, they face upwards. And so that allows for water intrusion to get down in there and affects the computer's ability to read the oil pressure switch, which is this one. You can see I've got a lot of crud in here as well. That's gonna be affecting the performance of this. So to give you a better look at a VTEC solenoid, we have one of the OEM one in here, brand new. Let's go ahead and open it up. One of the things to look out for, there's plenty on eBay and on Amazon that claim to be OEM. You can always determine the correct one by this bolt right here. So check out the shape, that star shape of this bolt. If it's anything but that, it's not OEM. You can see it includes the filter here or the screen. This is part that can get clogged as well. So a lot of times changing that screen is maybe the second thing that you want to do after changing out these pigtails. You can see as it sits like this, there are the two wire connectors up on top, and those are the ones that we're gonna be addressing today. Here I have some upgraded OEM harnesses. These have been upgraded by using a shrink wrap with glue inside of it to seal this up completely, stopping the likelihood that water is gonna get down in there and cause that. These come from Classic Automotive, North Carolina, and typically you only need to replace one of these, but I do have both of them here just in case. So I've gone ahead and pulled out the connector and we have a more challenging issue. That's oil inside of here. So it's not water intrusion that's the problem. We're getting oil that's leaking up through the switch and so this whole unit is gonna to need to be replaced. You know, there were some indications of that ahead of time. You can see some of the oil sitting out here. So this is a good time to replace the whole VTEC. Luckily, I've got one laying right here. As you remove the old solenoid, it's important to know where the bolts are. They go through these three holes. So you won't be able to see them. It's mounted with the bolts facing back into the firewall. They're 10 millimeter heads, and you can see where they're located here. You have to be very careful with these though. Since you can't see them, numerous people have stripped them over the years. And if you snap off or round off one of those heads, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Here's the old one. It is definitely time for a replacement. I had leaks coming out everywhere. You can see this gasket is garbage. It's totally gone. Um, this was an OEM one. Sometimes I will find these that have already been replaced with an aftermarket. It's always preferable to go with OEM. Some of the aftermarket ones last, um, other ones don't. And so whenever dealing with something like this, that's kind of a real pain in the butt. I prefer to go with the OEM. Took a little bit of oil on my fingertip, rubbed it around on the gasket just to make sure we have a slightly better seal. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this one. So I had really hoped that this was just gonna be a quick fix and a quick demonstration on how to replace the two wire harnesses here. Since I had to replace the VTEC solenoid, you know, it took a little bit longer. 
I've gone ahead and stripped the old ones off, trimmed back the covering a little bit, and then stripped the wires off. These are all color coded. So the new connectors that you get are the exact same color as the ones that you're replacing. As you can see, the wire that we're using here is really high quality. It's pre-tinned. So if you wanna go ahead and solder it in, you're welcome to. I'm gonna use these heat shrink butt connectors. There you go. The butt connections are made. Let's go ahead and get the uh, heat gun running. This is also an excellent time to go ahead and do an oil change, so I'll be getting to that. And then there's another screen right back here, okay, behind the power steering pump that you have to remove in order to be able to access that. I would go ahead and do that. So as you can see, it didn't turn out to be a quick and easy install video, but nonetheless, it actually went very smoothly. Special shout out to Ryan at Mano Supplies for the new hat, and I hope everybody is having a great start to 2025. I'm sure I'll see you soon.